你好,你發好了,你快吃吧! Thanks, Mr. Chen. Oh man, my work found out I'm not in America. They say I have to come back. When I connected on my VPN, they found out my IP address was coming back from Beijing. What can I do now? Hello everyone, and welcome back to Wolf for Programming. So have you ever wanted to appear that your computer is back at home when you're not at home, perhaps when you're logging on to a work for, for VPN, or you want someone to use a Netflix account where it looks like it's coming from your IP address. Well, the best option for that is to host your own WireGuard server. And there's a lot of good use cases for hosting your own WireGuard server. My favorite thing about hosting my own WireGuard VPN is I can access all of my local services on my Raspberry Pis and my Intel server that's upstairs in the closet from anywhere in the world. I've got it mapped from a domain name um, and I connect to a certificate that I generate. I generate it with PI VPN. So that's how I install WireGuard VPN on a Raspberry Pi, which I do recommend if you're gonna do it. And then I can access all my services. So what is WireGuard? For just a quick recap for those of you who don't know, WireGuard is a VPN, and while most people use VPNs because they want to pretend that they're not at home when they're browsing the internet, or that they want to pull their um, maybe web activity with other users to obf obfuscate it, there's some good reasons to want to be able to log into your home network when you're not at home. So the way WireGuard works is it's a newer VPN standard, newer than like OpenVPN. The code is much, um, it's, it's newer, it's faster, has less security faults, it's you know like, it's, it's very secure. So generally you run a WireGuard server which can be on pretty much any PC that stands, stays on all the time. I recommend a Raspberry Pi 4 or a Raspberry Pi 5 because those have gigabit ethernet. At my home I've got one gigabit up and down uh, fiber speeds and so that works very good with a Raspberry Pi 4 or Raspberry Pi 5. I've run them both, they both run great. And, um, and then you can generate um, certificates. And so the certificates that you connect over to the WireGuard server, they can be on your phone, they can be on your computer. Preferably though, um, they should be on a travel router. This is my favorite thing to do because by having the VPN connection run on a travel router, then your computer connects physically, um, preferably to the travel router in order to get its internet. And so to the computer, it just thinks that it's at your home. Um, everything goes um, through your home network. And I, I recommend the GLNet, iNet travel routers. I'll put a little clip up here on the screen of those that I have two of, and they both were great. They've got pros and cons. Um, you can check them out. I haven't found a good open source solution for the client side for the travel router. These work well enough. Um, and yeah, I uh, can't recommend them enough. Um, great. And they can actually run WireGuard servers themselves, but um, it's so easy to do with a Raspberry Pi. I recommend just running with a Raspberry Pi. So if you connect over with the travel router, then your phone and computer and any amount of devices that the router supports can connect, and they all look like it's going through WireGuard. And, then, and by doing that, you can kind of double hop on multiple VPNs. Maybe your work has a VPN you want to get on, and you want to have two VPNs. This is really the way to do it. Um, so, yeah, I want to give you a quick look around over uh, the UI that these routers have. <clears throat> a lot of no digital nomads recommend these routers. They're great. Um, so here I can upload my own WireGuard config um, for my device, and uh, I can also use other other services. Um, if you if you want to buy a VPN that works with just the WireGuard config, so you don't have to run a client. One of my favorite VPNs, and I'm not sponsored by them, um, they just seem like a pretty decent company to buy VPN service. It's about $5 a month, it's Mulvad, and you can pay with cryptocurrency, which I think is very nice of them. They say they don't keep any logs, uh, you don't have to give them your name or anything, you just get an ID, you give them $5 and you get a month. I think it's a pretty cool model. But yeah, use, use whatever you want, use whatever, um, whatever VPN service that you feel ethically and financially able to do. Um, yeah, a couple things to know about running your own <clears throat> your own VPN server, your own WireGuard server, 
is that uh, a lot, some, some public Wi-Fi networks will block the default port, so it's best if you can run through 443, which is the uh, TCP port, normally what most, most web traffic goes through if it's using certs, um, TLS certs. That way, uh, it doesn't want to block that, part, that port. They still can do deep packet inspection and kind of can detect if they see a VPN signature to like the login signature. And there's ways around that, ways around that with stuff like socks, proxies, uh, shadow socks. It's pretty cool. Um, let me know down below in the comments if you guys are interested in in uh, those more secretive VPNs. Um, I think for most people, WireGuard is great. Another thing I really like about WireGuard. Um, VPNs is because you can access all your local host services like your Jellyfin server, you don't have to generate uh, a certificate with like Let's Encrypt and then manage a complicated reverse proxy like Nginx. You just log into your VPN on your phone or your computer or your little travel router and you're on your home network and you can go to 192.168 whatever to get to your uh, to get to your device. So. Yeah, that's that's what I'm recommending. Everybody run their own WireGuard server. Do you guys run a VPN server at home? Um, are you interested in VPNs as a self-hosting thing? Uh, let me know down in the comments below. Do you have a better solution that you like better? Um, yeah, and have a great day.